Hi, I'm Angela Gardner with the Local Foods and Produce Safety Department at Cooperative Extension Service. I'll be talking today about trends in value-added foods in Arkansas. This webinar is for clients who are interested in making food products at the Sharegrounds facilities in Cleveland County, Searcy County, and Woodruff County. So we'll get started today by going over different types of value-added foods and different food trends that we're seeing in 2020. And then we'll look at different examples of these trending food items from Whole Foods Market in Little Rock. So types of value-added foods. The first one that we're all very familiar with is packaged foods. So these are food products that are canned in a jar, such as salsa, an item that is sealed in a pouch, such as chips, something that is bagged. Um, as well, this could be dried fruits, and then something that is jarred. And so this would be honey. Honey is a product that is not canned because it's not heated for the sealing process of a canned product. Refrigerated items, you'll see these in the cold case areas of the grocery store. And these types of food items are dips, such as your hummus and uh, guacamole. This can also be fermented items, such as sauerkraut and pickled items that are stored in the cooler case. Fresh cut value-added food items are a relatively newer product that we're seeing in grocery stores. Now these are fruits and vegetables that have been prepared and processed um, either at the store where it is being sold or at a facility that is permitted to process fresh cut fruits and vegetables. And we have some examples of those. And the last one we'll go over is frozen items. So these are uh, ready to eat meals that need to be heated up either through a microwave or an oven, ice cream, frozen vegetables and fruit, as well as frozen breads. So these will be found in the freezer section of your grocery store. So packaged food items. Here we have an example of bagged uh, items such as the dried apple chips. We have dried banana chips, uh, sweet rice chips, coconut products, and crispy, crunchy chickpeas. So just looking at this aisle, which this picture was taken from Whole Foods, most of these pictures are taken from that market. Um, these are just examples of the different packaging when we're talking about packaged bagged products. I just want you to look at the different colors and the different marketing that's going on there. What is catching your eye? And this can also help you decide how you want to package your food products as well. Another example here is fruit paste. And this is in a plastic container that is sealed around the edges with a uh, thin plastic strip. And then we have some packaged pasta pro products and these are in boxes. Refrigerated food examples. So these are your cold pickles. Um, in the lower part of the cabinet, there is fermented cabbage products, such as spicy kimchi and sauerkraut. Uh, this has been a trending food item um, in the States. A lot of interest in probiotics. And the difference between the refrigerated pickles and the canned pickles that you find on the shelf is that the refrigerated, refrigerated products have not been heat treated, therefore they have more of the beneficial probiotic properties um, than the canned counterparts. Fresh cut food. So these will be your bagged vegetables that have been shaved or trimmed or cut in some way that they're ready to go into your frying pan. These are great convenience items for families who are needing to reduce their time prepping fruit and vegetables at the home. So we also see veggie noodles and riced vegetables such as riced cauliflower, which is a meat alternative um, that consumers are using in their meals. At 
Whole Foods, they also have a fresh cut department, which processes their own fruit and vegetables in a um, refrigerated processing room there at the store. And they make these items that are in the plastic containers, such as the uh, potatoes and asparagus that are ready to go on your sheet tray with the sauce already there prepared, ready to go. And also in the bottom, you can see some specialty items such as cheese that is covered with a date paste and uh, cheese stuffed peppers and vegetable and fruit trays. And again, at Whole Foods, they have uh, pre-cut uh, fruits ready to go for convenience and snacking. Frozen food items. We're seeing a lot of alternative flour products in the market, and this was taken at Trader Joe's. So we see here we have frozen cauliflower pizza crust and another veggie pizza crust ready for toppings. They go into the oven. And this picture from Whole Foods is just an example of the um, trending plant-based frozen food products that are, is growing in that market. Here in this slide is a quote from Andrea Graves. She is a business planning and marketing specialist with the Oklahoma State University Robert M. Kerr Food and Agricultural Product Center. I chose this quote because it is very good advice for our food companies that are wanting to be successful in the food market. Her quote is, businesses need to pay attention to trends in order to find new growth opportunities in their target audiences. Understanding these trends helps businesses stay ahead of upcoming change, whether it is regulatory or a new flavor profile. Also, in most cases, consumers drive the trends and are looking for products and companies that are meeting their needs and lifestyles. So to reiterate what Ms. Graves is saying is that in order to maximize your market potential in the food processing industry, you really need to dial down to who your target audience is and what types of products are they looking for for their consumption habits and lifestyles. Um, the Robert M. Kerr Food and Agricultural Products Center release uh, food trends each year around the end of December. And this year for 2020, they are forecasting that protein is still going to be a big trend for consumers. So having um, things such as cookies and other convenience items that have added protein in them, and also a shift from meat-based protein to plant and other um, plant-based protein sources. Um, I'm thinking of Beyond Burger and that alternative protein source is actually a yeast protein. Also probiotic foods are still trending this year. They were on the list the past two years. And probiotic foods, you can find them in fermented vegetables like the refrigerated pickles we um, looked at earlier as well as beverages such as kombucha and uh, kefir, which you'll find in the refrigerated section again to maintain that probiotic um, levels. Also, consumers are wanting flavor variation in lieu of sugar. They're wanting more spice and flavor profiles and less uh, sugar for their palate. And also, again, the shift from meat proteins and having more veggie focused snacks and carb alternatives. We saw in the example of the different pizza crusts that were made with cauliflower and broccoli and kale, and also the veggie noodles in the fresh cut produce section. Whole Foods Market also releases food trends, and that is more from the consumption side, whereas the Oklahoma State University trends are more from a manufacturing business growth trend. So the consumer consumption trends for at Whole Foods Market for 2020 are listing as well alternative protein snacks. And one thing that they called out was 
having ready to eat hard boiled eggs with toppings, a savory toppings such as bacon and mustard dipping sauces are already ready to eat in one package. Unique nut butters and spreads. Consumers love new uh, flavors and are willing to try unique novel products and they are, they are willing to, to pay that for that unique product. So a unique nut butter that we're seeing is pecan, which is not as common as peanuts and almonds, but pecans are a, a nut that grows very well here in Arkansas. Also watermelon seed, that is a new spread that we're seeing in the market. Alternative flowers made from fruit and vegetables. So you are seeing, uh, again, that shift from carb heavy, meat heavy food products to alternative plant-based food items. So flowers that customers are demanding are um, cauliflower flowers and also banana flower, which I have not seen banana flower uh, in the market yet, but I have seen cauliflower and other nut-based flowers such as almond flour and cashew flour. Unique syrups for glazes. So again, people opting for uh, flavor instead of uh, pure sh sugar. So un a unique syrup that I have seen in the store has been the sweet potato syrup. And sweet potatoes grow very well here in Arkansas. And they can be reduced down into a um, syrup-like consistency and bottled for the market. Sorghum is another syrup. Um, sorghum is a little bit more trickier to grow in Arkansas, but it, there, there are plenty of farmers that, that do grow this product as well. The processing is just a little bit different to get the syrup from the sorghum. I conducted a survey of local markets in Arkansas, Me and McGee in North Little Rock, Bramble Market in Little Rock, Searcy Natural Health Food in Searcy, Good Measure Market in Searcy, the Truck Patch Market in Mountain Home, and Natural Bliss in Whitehall. And what they have been saying is that raw honey is their biggest, biggest demand for, from customers. And they also see a potential market for infused honey and other honey-based products, such as whipped honey, honey with nuts, creamed honey, honey sticks. So there is a huge potential for uh, raw honey food products in our local market. High quality meat and eggs. Uh, more consumers are wanting to know where their food comes from and by sourcing from local farmers they can know what the um, growing standards are for their meat and eggs. Elderberry products. Elderberry grows very well in Arkansas and elderberry is used as a supplement during the flu season for some consumers swear by it. I'm not making any claims here, but elderberry is a product that consumers are asking for at these stores. Elderberry juice, elderberry syrup, there are ways that you can reduce it down uh, to a shelf stable product very easily. Pickled vegetables, and that is another high demand uh, item, especially for me and McGee Marketplace. They sell a lot of pickled vegetable products and they are looking for uh, suppliers for pickled vegetable products. Now these are your canned pickled vegetable products. And I will say that making a pickle product that is canned, that goes through a heat process, uh, is going to be, um, a, there's going to be more stringent requirements to maintain food safety for this particular product. Fruit and nut bars. Um, People like convenient, ready to go, ready to eat items and fruit and nut bars. The local markets here believe there is a potential market for these types of food products. Now, we've go, gone over the different examples of food products, as well as the trends that we are seeing in the marketplace for 2020. Now I wanna pivot our conversation to how we think about marketing our food. What makes our food product stand out from competitors? 
So there's two things to think about when we market food or just market anything in general. Your product has two values. The first one is the use value. So what is the product? What is the function of this product? The function is to be consumed. So when you label your product, you label what it is. These are, this is a bag of granola. A customer is gonna walk by, if they're wanting granola, they're going to look at your product and decide whether or not they're going to consume that product. The other value that your, that your food product conveys to a consumer is its sign value. Its sign value is what is the meaning of the product to the customer? How is this product connected to the consumer? What's the association the consumer have to your product? And how does that product give the consumer identity? And so let's look at the value trends. So earlier we talked about the actual consumption trends of consumers. So now we'll take a look at the value trends of food products, what consumers are looking for in food products beyond the actual consumption of it. Consumers are more likely to purchase a product that has a story behind it. Was it great grandma's recipe? Is it a young girl who is making lemonade? What is some sort of connective story that gives the consumer a little bit of entertainment as they're looking at the product? Purchases that give back. You are seeing on some food products that they have a label that says 10% uh, pro of proceeds goes to XYZ charity. People are, may want to purchase those items that give back to a cause that they are connected to. Another value we have to consider is the generational values. So millennials are raising children right now. And so we're looking at a shift of food preferences for families as millennials raise the next generation of consumers. Millennials are looking for convenience. That's the biggest one we have to think about when we are considering millennials as our target audience. Supporting regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is a buzzword, not only for farmers and producers, but also in the food processing industry. We're wanting to support measures that help retain the health and viability of our natural resources. And that is what regenerative agriculture is trying to do. And some food processing companies will tout that they support farmers and producers that use regenerative agriculture practices in their operations, especially for um, the raising of meat products. Another big one that's popped onto the radar for 2020 is deforestation due to the um, production of palm oil in the Amazon. There has been a lot of issues this past summer with forest fires in the Amazon basin, and it is linked to the need to remove these forested lands for palm oil production. So some food processors are combating that by labeling their product as being made without palm oil, or if it is made with palm oil, palm oil that is uh, produced in a sustainable manner. So we've talked about different food products to consider. And we also talked about ways that you could market it to add value to the, con to the consumer through connection. And now so if you have a food concept in mind, what is the next step? You can't just invest millions of dollars into a food processing plant without vetting your food concept first. And there are different ways that you can go about testing your food product without breaking the bank. The Arkansas Department of Health has a list of food items that can be sold direct to consumer um, at a farmer's market or pop-up event that have uh, lesser food safety uh, standards than other food products. These items would be baked good products um, and some jams and jellies made with real sugar. Extension has a fact sheet developed by the Public Policy Center 
which helps uh, consumers walk through what items are allowed under cottage food to be produced in your home. The USDA offers farmers the opportunity to apply for a value added producer grant. And this grant could be used to help farmers test a food concept. For instance, a tomato farmer is wanting to diversify their farm's offerings. They could take some of their tomatoes that they didn't sell at the market and come up with a food product to have income during the off season. So that is an opportunity for our farmers. And in Little Rock, we have access to a commercial kitchen facility called AR Kitchen. And that is a kitchen, uh, it's a privately owned kitchen that, that um, clients can rent. In Fayetteville, there's the Arkansas Food Innovation Center, which is housed in the food science department at the Fayetteville campus. And they've been providing uh, commercial kitchen services for about eight years now. And in West Memphis, uh, the Delta Cuisine Kitchen Incubator is a partnership with ASU Mid-South, and they provide a commercial kitchen facility for clients to rent as well. Here at our office in Extension, we are launching three certified kitchen centers throughout the state called the Sharegrounds. We are reinventing what the fairgrounds can do in these spaces. So the Cleveland County Fairgrounds, the Searcy County Fairgrounds, and the three county fairgrounds in Woodruff County, uh, we are converting their concession stand facilities into commercial kitchen spaces for clients to test food concepts and then to grow their food business. So before go out and spend a lot of money trying to scale up a recipe, take your test food concept and go out in the marketplace and understand what it takes to be a player in this highly competitive field. First, build relationships with potential buyers. Sample your products at retail facilities, at farm stands, at the farmer's market, Visit grocery stores and pitch your food concept idea and just see how receptive your local market is to your particular product. And again, you can stay local or you can go national. If you have a very unique food product, consider attending a national food expo. I heard a story of a extension employee in Florida who was helping small business small food businesses grow and took one of her more unique vendors to a national food expo. Um, it was a popped sorghum snack. And this woman was picked up by a national hotel chain and sells her bagged sorghum snack in the um, grocery store of these hotel uh, chains throughout the nation. So if you have a unique market, you may want to consider expanding outside of the local market as well. Again, I'm going to keep repeating this, get to know your market and the consumer. For some folks, you're going to have direct consumers, face-to-face -face consumers. Others may want to just completely go online and have an e-commerce platform. Just understand your target audience and the market that you're working in. Again, there's a typical commercial marketplace that you can sell to, such as a grocery store, or if you have a really unique product that is more suitable to institutions, such as schools and daycares and hospitals, you may want to reach out to the buyers in those facilities to see what kind of products would they consider to buy locally. So that was the end of the slides and these next uh, the slides of the content, content, and the next slides are just additional examples for you to consider as you're testing out what particular product you want to make, as well as how you're going to market that product. So here are the unique nut butters. So we have sprouted almonds turned into a butter, a sprouted pumpkin seeds, and hazelnut. So all very unique. And again, I want 
to reiterate that as you go and do research in the marketplace, look at the price points of all the products in the same category that you're considering for your food product. As we can see, these unique butters are a very high price point. And we already have a local supplier of peanut butter. They make their product in Northwest Arkansas and their price point is a little bit more reasonable than the other ones. But again, they're not as unique as the sprouted nut butters. Elderberry, again, the middle shelf is all elderberry products. This is at Whole Foods. And when I spoke with the uh, supplements buyer, she told me that if you look at the price tag for these products, the items with a green dot sticker on them are their top 10 moving items. So on this shelf, we have one, two, about three of the top 10 moving items in their whole supplement category. And here we see an example of bagged popcorn that has collagen added to it. So a lot of folks are looking at having supplements added to their food products because of perceived health benefits. So that's another thing to maybe think of is, your, is your target audience looking for uh, ways to supplement nutrients into their diet? And here we see the assortment of sauces in the Whole Foods uh, International aisle. Lots of different tomato-based products here. And if you want to compete in the sauce market, just be prepared. It's a lot of competition. You really need a unique product. Just looking at these different items, there's a lot of different flavor profiles going here and a lot of different price points as well. Again, back to the whole flavor profile, this is all the hot sauces and hot uh, spreads in the international market aisle. And this was in the specialty aisle. On the left are pepper infused honeys. So again, the spice uh, flavor profile. And in the middle are the sliced jams. It's strawberry ancho preserves and blueberry and jalapeno preserves. And the specialty buyer told me these were fast selling items for her uh, section. And this was a food item I saw in the Atlanta airport, Larry Joe's Southern Pecan Jalapeno Pepper Jelly. Very unique, I've never seen anything like that. That is screaming out the South to me. And here in this uh, section, I just wanted to call out, I've been noticing a lot of fig, fig balsamic vinegar. I, I don't know why, but I, I guess just the combination of the balsamic and the fig goes very nicely together. But that was just something I noticed, and I do know figs grow really well here in Arkansas. Price points, very expensive, probably due to where they source their figs and where they source their balsamic uh, glaze or balsamic vinegar. In this last slide, I just wanted to call out that value that companies use for purchases that give back. So here, Newman's own 100% profits to charity. If I was looking at a cookie aisle and I had to decide between regular Oreos and Newman's own, I'm probably going to go with Newman's own because 100% of profits go to charity. It's just giving back something more than the Oreos are. And this uh, sign here, the red Whole Food Whole Kids Foundation sign, a little torn. It was at the bottom of the aisle. But what it's calling out is that a portion of the proceeds from Bitsy's Good Cookies snack packs go to the Whole Kids Foundation, which is a, a foundation that grants uh, funds for uh, kid-based garden learning. So again, if I was walking down the aisle and I wanted a snack, I'm going to go with the item that's calling out that it's giving back to a cause that I connect with. And I love gardening, and I love that they're teaching kids how to garden. So they got me on that one. 
if you would like more information about the share grounds and ways to start your small food company, please reach out. Uh, my contact information is listed here, my office number and my email. And also visit our website. We have additional presentations available there talking about different aspects to consider for your food company. www.uaex.edu slash sharegrounds. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to working with you in the future.